Okay, this is the second part of the discussion of cheese within the um, Kashrut Mid Busters series. So far, we've seen that uh, in the time of the Talmud, there was lack of clarity regarding the reason of the prohibition uh, to consume cheese made by non Jews. The consensus, however, with all the different arguments in the Talmud, seems to be that the prohibition had to do with some sort of non kosher ingredient. That ingredient, according to some opinions, was related to idolatry. And as I mentioned in the previous class, if this is the case, then cheese made without non-kosher ingredients should be deemed kosher. And this was indeed the opinion of leading rabbis in medieval France. And apparently there should be no reason why we should not follow their ruling today. What would be the argument against using the ingredients of the cheese as the yardstick for its qualification as kosher? Um, the answer to this question is at the core of one of the most fundamental debates in Jewish law, a debate whose roots are in the Talmud, but which was crystallized in medieval times. And that is the question whether one can change, repeal, revoke a decree made by the rabbis of the Mishnah of the Talmud. So Maimonides writes in Hilchot Mamrim that uh, which are the laws of the, of the elder who rebels against, uh, against the rabbinical court, um, so Rambam writes that uh, if the rabbinical court created a decree, a regulation or a practice, gezera, takana, or minhag, and those have become widespread, a future court cannot undo their decision, even if the reason of said decree, regulation, or practice no longer exists, uh, unless the later court is greater in, uh, than the early one in both the number of judges number of, uh, of members of the court, and in experience or wisdom. This is Rambam, Yichot Mavrim, Perek Bet, Alach Bet. And it says, Bedin she gazru gzera ota tiknut takana v'inigu minahag, ve'amad bedin aher l'akor divrahem, eno yachol at she'e gadol min ha'rishonim b'achoma u'v'minyan. The Ravad, Rabbi Avram ben David, who is the, the harshest critic of Rambam writes on the spot, Amar Avram, Itur Shvakei Yerushalayim Beferot Kashi Ale, Sharishonim Tiknu, Verabban Yohanan Bezakai, Bitla Ahar Horban, Mipene Shenit Batel Atam La Rishonim, Velo Haya Gadol Karishonim. Ravad refutes Rambam's argument by showing a clear case of one of the greatest uh, legislators of Mishnaic Judaism, Rabban Yohanan Bezakai, who, following the destruction of the temple, uh, Annulled, nullified the takana, the decree of bringing fruits to Yerushalayim as part of the Maaser. Um, the details are not necessarily important. And now, the point is that Rabban Yohanan ben Zakai was able to override a decree that was created by uh, generations before him, even though it was not as great as they were. And the reason he did that is that the original reason for the, the, the decree no longer. Um, no, no, no longer existed. Um, so, already Rabbi Avraham and David Ravad shows that uh, the argument of Rambam, of Maimonides, that one cannot change the Takana is, uh, is problematic. And the commentators of Maimonides cannot provide a sufficient explanation to the case uh, cited by the Ravad. But just to briefly talk about this rule before we get to the issue of cheese is. Uh, we might say that the the rule, as Rambam phrased it, that one bedin cannot override the words of another bedin unless it's greater in uh, number of members and in experience, originally applied to two courts that existed uh, simultaneously in the same city or in the same in the same uh, country, and that would make sense that one of them would not be able to override the other, that the hierarchy will be given to the one which has more expertise and greater number of judges. But it would not make sense to apply this uh, this rule to courts that exist consecutively, because otherwise we will never give a later court the ability to discuss and to change uh, decisions made by previous courts, especially following some of the... Uh, some of the rabbis who hold that we always we are always lesser than the previous generations. If that if we follow that, we will paralyze halacha without leaving room for innovation and accommodation for changing reality. But this is a matter for another discussion. What I what is important to our discussion now 
is that really is that the prohibition of cheese made by non-Jews does not fall under any of the categories mentioned by Maimonides. Uh, a decree, gezerah, is usually gezerah to forbid something from, ha- to, to prevent something from happening. Takana is to fix a, uh, an existing uh, situation. Minhag is a practice. This is neither of, uh, of all those three. It's a prohibition of consumption based on um, probably the, the ingredients in the, uh, in the cheese. And uh, although the Mishnah did not provide full details, the Talmud Yerushalmi did. So this brings us to the discussion um, by, uh, by the Tosafot, the authors of the commentary on the Talmud, uh, the grandchildren of the Rashi and their disciples, and they discuss the text that we, I previously quoted from the Treket Abu Dazara, where the Talmud suggests six different reasons for the prohibition. Uh, the Tosafot show that there is no reason to declare cheese as non-kosher other than the presence of non-kosher ingredients or dangerous ingredients. In that discussion, we find out that there were great scholars who allowed the consumption of cheese with vegetarian rennet made by non-Jews. So, um, if you want to see the Hebrew text of this uh, Tosafot, it would be in Masechet Abu Dazara, page 35, Amud Aleph, and Dibur Amatil Hadaka Taneh. Now, I will translate here what the Tosafot say. First, he quotes Rabbein Utam, who says that now, and now, now he means medieval uh, uh, France, we have no logical reason to forbid cheese made by non-Jews, since the reason for the original prohibition was the fear of snake bites. That reason was presented by Rabbi Yosha ben Levi, and Rabbi Yosha ben Levi overrides the opinions of all others. Meaning, Rabbi Yosha says, since we have six opinions in the Talmud, one of them is Rabbi Yosha ben Levi, Rabbi Yosha ben Levi is the one opinion that we follow. We follow uh, Rabbi Yosha ben Levi, and therefore the main reason for not eating cheese made by non-Jews is the fear that snakes bit the cheese while it was left outside to, to uh, process in the mold. And since... Rabbi Nutam says, since we, there are no snakes where we live, there's no such concern and there's no prohibition. Definitely not in today's uh, way of manufacturing and, and processing. Um, he quotes also two of the leading Gaonim, Rabbi Nuhanan and Seder Tanaim Vamuraim, who say that we always follow the opinion of Rabbi Yosha ben Levi. Then, Tosafot go on to, goes on to say that the opinion of Rabbi Adab Bar Ahava, that the cheese is forbidden because it's polished with lard, does not have any weight, cannot compete with the opinion of Bishop ben Levi. Um, he also says that the, the other two opinions, that it has to do with non-kosher vinegar or sap, were refuted in the Talmud. Uh, the, interestingly enough, he said, the, the author of the Safot says that there is no concern about non-kosher milk being mixed into the cheese. This is mentioned in the Talmud in the name of Rav Hanina. Since the non-Jews are not fools to do that, because they know that they will be caught, since it is known that non-kosher milk does not coagulate, does not turn into cheese. Now this, in parenthesis, will say that this comment by Tosafot is a rebuke to the kosher industry, because the Tosafot clearly say you cannot make cheese from non-kosher milk. So there's no fear of non-kosher milk mixed in the cheese. When you label cheese as halav Israel, you say that we have an added level of kashrut because we use supervised the milk to make sure that it's kosher milk, but it's not necessary because the moment you see cheese, you know that the cheese was made from kosher milk. This is tantamount to labeling, labeling water as fat-free or parv, dairy-free, etc. This, it doesn't never applies to water, so also halav Israel never applies to cheese. But you slap the label on it, you could charge more money. Obviously, the only reason, say the Tosafot, is the fear of snake bites, which is not applicable uh, where we live. Now, one cannot argue that the original prohibition was uh, declared in a uh, through a vote in a bedin, and therefore cannot be refuted or changed unless you have a new session and voting by a greater rabbinical court. Since it is obvious the original prohibition was limited only to cases where the fear of snake bites exists, uh, and the Tosafot also tells us that. They will deal with it when they come to the issue of kosher wine, which I hope also to do in the future. Um, and finally, the Tosafot conclude that in many places, including in uh, specifically in uh, Narbonne, the great rabbis of Narbonne, which is in Provence, France, 
ruled that cheese made with uh, what they call prahim, meaning uh, plant-based rennet, is kosher because the ingredients are kosher. Um, however, in our place, say the Tosafot, which could be northern France or Germany, uh, there is a problem that uh, the actual stomachs of of the calves are used to uh, to process the cheese, meaning they use uh, pieces from the stomach, and that could be either a dairy or dairy and meat, or uh, in some places they use stomachs from from pigs. And uh, even though it's not cooked with the milk because they use a lot of salt, being salted together is uh, considered as cooking. But the Tosafot, however, with all that, the Tosafot suggests that if we know exactly what are the ingredients in the cheese, then uh, we can determine whether it's kosher or not. So two conclusions from this Tosafot. The, one, the only serious reason to consider cheese made by non-Jews as non-kosher is that they used to be exposed during the process and thus susceptible to contamination by snakes. Second, even if we accept the other opinions of the Talmud, that the prohibition is because of non-kosher ingredients, once we ascertain that all ingredients are kosher, so is the cheese. And so was the practice in many Jewish communities. People used to eat cheese made by non-Jews as long as they knew that the ingredients are kosher. Um, it's, I wish that people would, would be willing to follow Rabbi Tam just as they follow Rabbi Tam regarding waiting another, an extra hour on Motei Shabbat, or wearing two pairs of tefillin, and that the same rabbis would tell us, don't pick and choose your rabbi, don't pick and choose different halakhic decisions by the same rabbi, would not pick and choose and follow Rabbi Tam in all of his rulings. Um, in a- any case, the conclusion would be that, uh, since we've seen that the Mishnah mentions a prohibition against cheese made by non-Jews, and that the Talmud struggles to find a reason for the prohibition, um, we we understand that there was some problem with the origins of the prohibition. There is an opinion that the prohibition should be upheld because of Maimonides says that the later court does not have the authority to change a decree. Um, but to that we answer that, one, the opinion of Maimonides is challenged by the Ravad. Second, that Maimonides' statement refers to three specific types of rabbinical decision and the prohibition of cheese does not fall under any of them. Third, the wide common practice in medieval France and Germany was to judge kashrut of cheese by its ingredients. The fact that it was made by non-Jews had no weight and there was no hesitation to overrule the ancient prohibition. So, in conclusion, one can choose to be strict and to avoid non-supervised cheese or one can choose to rely on the Ravad, Rabbi Nutam and the great scholars of Narbonne as well as common sense and determine the kashrut of cheese by its ingredients. Of course, you have to have more caution when dealing with artisanal cheese and small dairy farms. According to the second approach, all cheeses made with vegetarian rennet are kosher because the ingredients are kosher. Animal-based rennet, which underwent the industrial process, has lost its status of food. It actually never had the status of food to begin with, and cheese made with it is also kosher, as we have seen in Maimonides' uh, commentary on the Mishnah. If one chooses one is allowed to purchase cheese marked as kosher or halav Israel, although uh, the labeling, as previously explained, is somewhat misleading and the price is exorbitant. Bon appetit.